Special guest Jeremy White, thank you for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me. I'm just texting or sending my uh, a new fan the link. So we have a new fan after this. Yeah, that is fans. big. Yes. Tonight in studio, DJ Supreme, Patty Roosevelt, producer Burrs, Topher, and Maniac. You changed the order tonight. I did. I filled it up. Oh. I went the producers first. Hell yeah. Thank you, fellow Hop lately. Seriously. Uh, lots to talk about. Obviously, breaking news. Part of my take will now. Be on ESPN2 with their own segment weekly. Uh, we'll be talking Bills, Sabres, and what does Jeremy White do in life other than work the 6 to 10 <laughs> at WGR? Tonight's show sponsor, we have two now. Rock Bottom and D'Agostino's Pizza. Oh. Right around the corner. Couldn't wait on it, folks. Tuesday night's pizza <laughs> is ten ninety nine. Let's go. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. You've been with the morning show now, what, 14 years is how it's on? Uh, yes, our first day, Howard always tells the story, our first day was the day after the Obama-McCain election. It was a Wednesday. Something to remember. I'm pretty sure it was like the day after or the day of the election. Uh, whenever the Bills played the Cardinals in like 2004. That's when it was. Okay. So that's that's gonna be on a Brad Ryder trivia card. Someday. Okay, good. When yeah, good. did Howard and Jeremy there? <laughs> the day after the Obama the, game. You want to know a little story about that? He, so he, Brad and I worked together at the time, and I got a call from a gloss, and he's like, "Hey, uh, don't come into work tonight." I was like, "Oh, that seems bad." He's like, "No, uh, we're moving you to the mornings with Howard. Brad's staying at night. Don't come in tonight. Come in tomorrow. We'll talk about the plan from there." Were you devastated? Uh, I wasn't devastated, but I was excited like to get that opportunity to go to the mornings. But Brad and I had been told at one point that like we we would stay together. So like in that moment, Brad and I were disappointed about that. Um, but I, mean, I was really excited, and Brad was kind of disappointed. I think they were losing me, but I mean he was amazing by himself. He was amazing before I showed up. So yeah. uh, they split us, and ultimately what happened is uh, you know like it was harder to stay in touch and be be as close as we were. We every single day. When we work together at night, we wake up, play video games online, talk about the show, eat pizza, and then do the show. And that was, right, that was life for like a year and a half. Is that our life right now? That was life. Yeah. So then I, you know, got the early shift and uh, things kind of changed from there. But I'll, I'll never forget, like, don't come into work tonight. I mean, who tells someone? That's that, really right? a <laughs> mind F, as they say. Right, I know. Yeah. So we got a couple Syracuse grads in the house. Petty Roosevelt, Maniac. You are 2001. Uh, 2001. Sports biggest sports sports memory that you know from uh, back then. Donovan McNabb. Yeah, yeah McNabb the, was there, right? Yeah. McNabb was there for my first two years there, and then Troy Noons took over. He was terrible. Um, <laughs> He's an absolute magician. He is an absolute magician. Sean Keeley, who Kelly Keeley, whichever it is. Keeley. He, he, yeah, Sean Keeley. He writes for maybe a place in Seattle now. He uh, he wrote a book how to grow an, how to grow an orange. I'll plug his book. And it's all Syracuse history and, like, how to become a Syracuse fan if you are not one or if you, like, went to school there. A lot of really cool stuff about, like, when the basketball team stood up or football team stood up for Muslim players. Like, very much. Anyway, I'm rambling. I'll stop. I no. love Syracuse. It's a great plug for a Bible of any orange, for sure. <laughs> yeah. no, Did no, you no. catch any the, Boy Freeney while you were there? Did you a little bit. Yes, okay. I was there for Freeney's game when he terrorized Vic okay. with a club on his hand, maybe? Okay. I'm just going to mix all my memories here. But the best sports memory, uh, McNabb to Stephen Brominski, a touchdown at the end of a game to win the Big East title, and half my roommates went there because they went back uh, because they're too drunk. Jesus. So, yeah, 
long time ago. Well, I'm not gonna lie, my sports memories there, like, I'm like a total sadist, so I just love when the Greg Paulus era started. Oh, yeah, that's... Everyone, who are they playing? Minnesota, across the, on the sidelines, Eric Decker, nobody knew that he was gonna become, like, a big-time NFL player at that point. Greg Paulus in a QB, you're, you're like, somehow this guy's playing QB after he's playing, you know, basketball, never really been done that I could remember. All of a sudden, snap over his head, Minnesota ball going the other way. Everyone in 60,000 shirts that say, it starts now. And literally the first play yeah. was a fumble. I, I think for me, my best spot in Syracuse, I got to see the first game that Duke played against us oh, in the Dome. Cool. Jabari Parker, just absolutely dominant. Um, who else did they had? Uh, was that the overtime game? That, yeah, it was uh, the overtime where Jeremy Grant had like six straight dunks yeah. to win them the game. Yeah, that one was pretty exciting. I also saw Jameis Winston, Sammy Watkins, like a lot of players like came through after they switched to the ACC because I actually got to go to the last Big East tournament. That was my freshman year, so I had that little in between moment between the nice. Big East and the ACC. So Jeremy, I'm not a Syracuse grad or a UB grad. I went to a small school in Boston, and I gotta, I gotta thank you because what you, you, you saved my life a couple times, Bentley. Bentley. Yeah, yeah. You saved my life yeah. a few times between 2012 and 2016. Okay. The depths, the depths what? of the tank. You well, I, that I, tank. hold on. I've been to Bentley. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hockey I've been, team. I've been to Bentley with Niagara Hockey. I have yep. toured every small northeastern college that there is. They, they don't even okay. have a rink on campus. It was in Watertown. Yeah. Watertown. Yeah, it was like the Pepsi Center, the equivalent. Mm, I wouldn't say the equivalent. It was pretty dumpy. The Pepsi Center would have been a massive step up. <laughs> there have been, I've been to some really well, bad We're taking all my tuition money and building a rink on campus after well, I left. I now, mean, so. to be totally honest, it's like... It's called it's building the, value. The serious side is like the explosion of college hockey and, and sports and like the D1 route. But there were some rinks back a couple years ago. Bentley was one, Sacred Heart was another. And these rinks were not fit to have college games. Yeah. And like they had to be... Moved into AHL rinks because they were so bad. So I've yep. been all yeah. over the Northeast okay. to see hockey rinks. Nice. Well, I, I gotta thank you though because being surrounded by Boston sports fans, they won like a World Series, couple Super Bowls, made the Stanley Cup Finals against Chicago, and like I said, Buffalo was in the depths of times. Yeah. And Did you I, call... I think I texted you. I texted you enough a couple times just because you know I was a little aggravated those nights. So I'm yeah. sorry about that. Did but... you call everyone in Boston and ask them if Jack Eichel was going to sign in Boston at his first opportunity today? Just a little snark their way. No, because, but I uh, should. Clearly didn't. No. Even though a lot of people said that. Hey, the Patriots are two really and two. I don't want to rub it in. They're 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 That's going right. through some tough That's times, right. Jeremy. So, Adversity. A couple things I gotta ask about Syracuse. One, why don't you play a real defense basketball wise? Two, why do you refuse to play University of basketball, or Buffalo in basketball? One. Except for the uh, if you've got a specialty, stick with it. You yeah. Know? It doesn't breed great pros usually. That's not always. That's good. true. Uh, but if you're long, you're competitive. It used to work in the uh, in the Big East because the Big East wasn't a three-point shooting league, and the ACC is, so mm -hmm. I think that's part of the problem, like myself. Uh, and what was your second question? University of Buffalo. Yeah. Why do you refuse to play them? It's uh, happening this year, finally. Oh, is I, it? No, it's in years. Mm, that's not good. Right. It's I, not good. <laughs> it's not there's good. nothing to gain. There's nothing to gain. That's Listen. a good point. There's a, there is absolutely right. right. There is nothing to gain. Syracuse came into UB Stadium for football, what, like 10 years ago? I Not a good game. idea. It was like the worst night of my life. They won, thank God. If they had lost, if Syracuse ever loses to either A, UB, or B, St. Bonaventure, we might as well just F and shut it down because right. I'll never stop hearing the end of it. By the way, it's good that Syracuse got in the tournament and the bodies didn't. All right, so it's like a good usher. It's not like the bodies probably deserve the end. But Syracuse won the Final Four, so, you know. All right, it's all right. We like I say, you know, if Duke came into Alumni Arena, you'd lose by forty, so it's no big deal. So we're not okay. That's an irrelevant <laughs> like question. You'd probably be in the game for about a minute and a half. Okay, man. Maniac, you know what's happened in the past 10, 11 years? <laughs> We've had some big time schools like in the house. Happened. I got you on preheat right now. Pit with pit, you do. Pit with Aaron Gray, UConn with a oh, bunch geez. of studs. And yeah, UB did lose, but it wasn't a 40 point game, and that's why no good schools come play at Alumni Arena anymore. But we're not going to talk about it. Be, before okay. we change from college Syracuse basketball, basketball real quick, though, is Jay, Jim Beheim ever going to leave with Mike Hopkins no. gone now to Washington? No, nope. good question. No, <coughs> Bless you. Excuse me. Sorry. He's like Jordan Belfort. Throw this away now, once it's on. I got a cold, like, today. I picked one up today, so. Apologize. <laughs> Fine. Not a great way to start October. Yeah. The right. Wrecking Crew is a new thing. It's called here. Rocktober. Isn't it Rocktober or. Uh, I used to work at a classic rock station. Shoptober, there's a million Tovers. Yep. Tovers. It's whatever you're in the mood Tovers. for, honestly. Tovers. Whatever you need to justify at that moment in October. 
All right, so let's get into the big news of yesterday. Jack Eichel, eight years, eighty million. Obviously, you know, last year was happening at this time. Uh -huh. um, and it's kind of funny to see some articles that came out today. Like, obviously, people not from Buffalo, like Yahoo, came out with an article saying, "Is are, are the Sabers overpaying?" And you've got to think, if you're from another market, you don't follow the Buffalo Sabers too much. You're gonna think that this is like a, a deal that's completely overpaid. He didn't play much last year. He didn't put up any points. But if you're from Buffalo, you know that this guy is the real deal. And getting it done now is big. You let him go an entire season without signing a contract, and then, what, you have Austin Matthews coming off his sophomore season. They both put up monster years. And then, mm -hmm. can you imagine if Matthews signed before Eichel? Just obviously didn't happen, but it, I, very glad it got done. Yeah, I, I, I was thinking it was going to be a bad look to go the whole year without signing him. Uh, the commitment is great from the team. Like, think about Sam Reinhardt. He's going into the third year, and we don't really know where his ceiling is or what he's going to be, and he's, all right, go ahead and play it out. We'll figure it out. To have it be the same with Jack wouldn't have felt right, at least no. not to me. So, And in terms of overpaying, like, we do this all the time. Everybody's overpaid, right? Uh, Leonard gets $4 million a year. That's too much. Okay, right? <laughs> like, the Sabres have 10 guys that are more overpaid than Jack Eichel is. Bogosian, Molson. Like, everybody on the team is mm -hmm. overpaid. So I don't really worry about J Jason Pominville is going to be overpaid this year. So I don't worry about it at all. Ten million dollars, it's worth it. You've got your best player signed for Definitely. a long time. Easy, easy decision. Crazy stat. I forgot who tweeted it. Jack Eichel, if he was in the NBA, would be the hundred tenth highest paid player. I'm gonna say yep. highest paid player. Is yep. that ridiculous? Well, this is I, I this is my stump speech to every NHL player that'll ever listen. Get smart and make your sport better. You'll make more money on TV, and everybody makes more. That's how you make more money. True. The NBA all of a sudden has this huge infusion of a billion dollars from TNT because the sport got awesome again. So the players make all that money and they yep. keep changing the cap every year. Meanwhile, in hockey, it's like, uh, you know. All of our all economists, of all of our economist viewers are yelling about the Canadian dollar. Right okay, now well that's their phones. that's going to be a factor <laughs> of it too. But make the game better. You know, they can expand to Vegas. They can try and like regionalize the China. What? Just make more people want to watch. It's pretty simple. And then. You'll make more money on the TV deal because that's what drives right. these leagues. So your tweet today, Eichel, 67 and a half points. That had to be a joke, right? No, it's a, a, a certain site that I see. It was. You, you want to take action? I think I might. The only reason, the only way he wouldn't get 67 and a half is he got hurt. Seriously, that is the only, literally. Right, right. Only He's way. over. over right? Literally the only that's, way. Yeah, I agree. He should have 50 on the power play, maybe. <laughs> like, you know, Even yeah. if you gave him 65 games, I mean. Even then, I would say might it might be good. close. Because I'm like, you know, I mean, I don't know. Maybe we're just thinking he's the greatest player ever, but I mean, he's got a lot of great points. He's an absolute superstar. It's, you know, absolute on the cusp of superstar on nationwide. Yeah, and absolutely nobody on the West Coast would have any idea who this guy is because, you know, he's hurt for first third of last year, and then the Sabres really didn't do anything. They found their way out of relevance pretty quickly. And he plays for a U.S. team that's a small market. If he played in Canada, he'd be pumped up quite a bit more. I mean, Canada loves to pump up Canadian players or players that play for Canadian markets. Maybe it's just a reality that if Matthews were here and Eichel were there, Eichel would be pushed more than Matthews. Toronto gets, like, when there's a Rookie of the Year vote and you see a Leafs player in the final, as a finalist, bet everything you can on that Leafs player. You know, Line A could have more goals in a better season and be like, yeah, well, come on. Mm -hmm. He's a Leaf. So before we get into some other topics, a couple questions for you. Outlook on the Sabres this year. Do they make the playoffs? And two, is Eichel the captain? Eichel's not the captain. They said that today. I. Think well, that, they didn't say he's not the captain. They, they said, said it's they still, have, they're not going to have a captain. Is he the eventual captain? I think probably. They're game. probably going to let it happen organically. But Jason Bottrell said today they're not going to have a captain to start the season, which is like that's actually what the Leafs are doing too. So three A's, something like that. I guess so. You okay. have to designate one on the score sheet for the refs, but no one will get. I don't think anybody gets to see on the jersey. Okay. To start the year. Um, and Outlook, please make the playoffs. Please. Or just be in a playoff race because it's uh, – I can't defend to the anti-tankers anymore that the tank didn't work. So just make the playoffs. Are you I mean, I can defend it, but I just don't want to. Are you a tanker? Oh, my God. What do you mean? What? Huh? You're talking to the, <laughs> you're talking to the five Mr. Star General. Mr. Mm. Tank. Frank and Cheek to log up. He was here. Oh, he, we would never show up here. Jeremy, have you ever seen that Twitter account, Frank and Cheek Dewaga? <laughs> this is area one to Frank and Cheek. Is it Cheek a Dewaga. really bad Twitter account? Oh, oh I, mean, yeah, I can't yeah. tell if it's a troll or if it's a real. What person. does he say to Joe, Joe Scaglia or Rodan? He, 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 crop, he crops their faces onto to, uh, <laughs> to doctors every time they tweet like a report about oh. a player being injured. 
Yeah. Very anti-tank. He's his uh his banner is the WGR app like when it's playing. Yeah. Like just that black screen with the play button, and his description is always listening to WGR twenty four seven except for when they're talking about tanking. So hmm. he must not like. I mean, I probably muted him. Yeah. I, there's I a million hope. people that I've just muted or blocked. How many people have you blocked in your time? I've changed it to mute. The, the only problem that's tough is if you block someone, they can't tweet to you or whatever. And that, they know they're blocked, so they stop tweeting you. And then they'll, they'll screenshot that you blocked them. Right. And tell that doesn't bother me. If you mute someone and like, they threaten to kill you, you don't see it and they think you did. So like, I don't know how to... That's I like that. Like that. Though, you know, like, I kind of want to know that. That yeah. is a phenomenal argument for muting over blocking. That's, what <laughs> that's, that's an argument for blocking, I think. Because if the person can't, the knows I can't see the death threat, then they're like, mm, what's the point? And I might not know they're insane or something. Wow, and imagine if someone, like, they, you think about the reverse psychology, you could work with that. Like, let's say you knew, like, someone at work, like, had you on mute. Like, oh, sorry, I'm having an affair with your wife. Like, great way to get it off your chest. Right, and oh, you'd oh, never hear that. And you get it off your chest. Right. It's a win-win for both parties. Oh, all right, yeah. So, going back to the tank, you had that article that you posted this morning. Yes. Uh, you had a bunch of uh, examples of texts that you got in. Were there any of your favorite texts that you just legitimately could not post on the site that you absolutely loved? No, no. I mean, some people swore, and well, but, like, in a good way. Um, no. I would say that throughout that throughout the tank and the thirty club and that text thing, like that was uh, like as bad as Twitter can be for trolls and complete, you know, horrible people. Mm -hmm. That thirty club was the best thing ever. Those are all the best people, the nicest people. They're all funny, and it was it was a ton of fun. It's a cult. It's a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Random question before I forget: What moment led to your? I feel like you've had your Twitter avatar for years. Oh, like okay. what moment led to you just on the ground in shambles? In the studio. You don't know? No. No. You don't know what knows? No. I mean, I'm sure, no. we, could we have Googled this and found out, or? Hmm. No. Did you, hmm. oh, what was that? Hmm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> you want to guess? Want to play a game? Want to uh, guess? Hell yeah, I love this. Can you give us a time period, maybe? Or like? 2012. Uh, Th there was an extended, an extended period of time where we didn't know if something was going to happen in 2012. I think it was 2020. Mario Williams? Yeah. Bingo. Wow. Lucky guys. Lucky guys. Because I, I worked, I think, from like 6 a.m., Howard might have been off, till 2 p.m. on Mario Day 2 or something. We can't let him leave Buffalo. All yeah, I'm saying, let him win. All I'm saying, 4.45 p.m., pro football talks rolling in. Mario is on his way out of Buffalo. Right, that of was course. demoralizing right. like 12 minutes. I was, I was kind of rooting for the Brad Richards situation because okay. just... Yep. It, it, it kind of hurts me that the situation actually worked out in the in Buffalo. Got yeah, it was. Right. It was just that it was like three days of all right, what are we doing here? Is this happening or not? That's true. So that's what that's Stressful called. Stressful three days. And pro football talk is terrible. So. <laughs> and they, they Florio's they, they the roadback of the NFL. They put the Bills number two this week. That is true. Good for them. <laughs> yeah, that that actually kind of worries me. So before we get into your your battle on Twitter with all the Barstool people, did you ever have a a I work, a, I not not about it with them. With with the barstool people. Yeah, with them coming after you. Barstool didn't come after me. Not barstool, but they're fans. Oh. They're, they're, they're anti fans. Uh, so I, I, okay, yeah, sure. Here. Other barstool so, media. Oh. So I, before I you into that. that, have you ever taken a beating on Twitter? I know it, it's weird because when you started at TR, you, there was no Twitter. Yeah. You had nothing to worry about. Now that you're on Twitter, did you ever like send out a tweet or an opinion and it just blew up in your face? Like anything worse than like that? Um. Sure, I mean, people get mad when they hear a lot of stuff. The tank was all, was good for that. Um, i trying to think what else. Any specific situation that Not, comes to mind? I mean, I defended Stefan Gilmore for a long time because he was part of a good defense and he was good. Yeah. And people just didn't want to hear that. Uh, now he's bad, so of course I was wrong five years ago. Um, <laughs> Tom Curran. Or it's Bill Belichick's fault. Just had to jump in here. Tom Curran at Pro Football Talk, like NBC, did a piece today on so how Stefan Gilmore literally mean, makes every player around him worse. Right. That's literally was the point. I, I just maybe he's having a bad year. Maybe he's struggling to adjust. It's just funny. Hey, look, the defensive genius with the engineer defensive coordinator. <laughs> it's not their fault. They don't have anything to do with it. It's him. It's that guy. I mean, they it was, picked it was, him. It was basic stuff last week too. Carolina would do a, a simple motion receiver, and they just got all screwed up. I mean, I've never seen that on New England before. Yeah. So anyway, I don't even defend him anymore. He's gone and whatever. What blow? I don't know, I'm trying to think what blew up in my face. 
Nothing that I can really think of. I don't say anything stupid ever. You don't. I no, mean, actually, you, I, I do. I do. You said something nice about Barstool. Yeah. And it blew up. Yeah. Uh, I complimented Barstool Sports for the interviews that they get. I think they get the best interviews in all of media. And when I wrote it, it was about Jack Eichel's interview with Spittin' Chicklets, which is a podcast that I do not listen to. Mm -hmm. But it was okay. It wasn't the best interview I've ever heard. Uh, but it reminded me of all the interviews I listened to with Part of My Take, which are the best interviews in the entire medium of podcasting or radio. Maybe outside of Howard Stern, which I never hear anymore. He's on satellite when I'm on. So I like forget that people exist. I forget Jim Rome exists. You know, I, I, I know they're still out there, but I don't listen to them, so... The people I listen to are Barstool, so I thought I would say, uh, pardon my take, those are the best interviews that I hear because it's accurate. Mm -hmm. Because it's true. I, and same thing for I, anyone who doesn't have their head in the sand or somewhere stuck somewhere else understands that Barstool gives you a complete alternative that is different to really any other thing else out there right now. And I don't like everything they do at all, but the fact that I think pardon my take is about to go on to ESPN2 for a little while. Uh, that's it an, indica shows. That's an yeah. indication they're, they're doing something right. They get great guests, uh, and I think they're great. So, yeah, no Are they going to get people to piss their pants on a Disney channel? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> you know what? All I'm going to say is, hey, John, John Waddock, it's time to give up or do better. That's all I'm going to say. Hmm. 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 And hmm. real quick, Molly McGee33, yeah. Jeremy White is so that. dreamy. That's my wife. Oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> 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 you started to oh, show me on your followers. Holy shit! That's what you got on. I just got crushed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Holy you shit! Holy shit! I'm showing a new fan. Nope. Well, that's Nikki. Thank you. That's my wife. <laughs> that's Holy awesome. shit! Newest follower. Newest follower. Thank you for that. Yeah, you're welcome. At least she's a fan. <laughs> that's true. That is awesome. I just got it. Molly McGee, all aboard. Thanks for thanks for hopping on. Oh my He's god. He's kind of dreamy, you're right. <laughs> you gotta know when someone's right sometimes. Who says it's Like in that case, with right the bar stool point. Jeez, I mean, the way, I mean, we can't, we can't go into it enough, but the way some people were rushing to just totally disregard that statement or say it was wrong was crazy. Well, I appreciate that. Shows that once you put anything out on Twitter, anything really can happen. Well, that's the thing, like, I don't know, sometimes people see an opinion and they act like it's, an, it's a personal affront to themselves. Like, I didn't tweet Seriously. it. I didn't tweet it at you. I didn't say you suck. I said they're good. <laughs> oh, what's wrong with that? Sorry. And, and there actually, like, are rankings to back up, like, what you said, like, Not on the just that. It's like, my opinion to be like, if I was like, I love pizza, and <laughs> Wings tweeted, F that, I'm better. Okay. Nothing. Well, celery better. is better than wings. I like right? pizza. Celery is better than wings. Is that right? Uh, celery won the most recent race, right? Exactly. Yeah. Celery is on top. All right. So before we get in the Bills game this weekend, Howard Simon, what is the most controversial thing he's ever said to you, whether it's on air or off air? Because we know he doesn't like to, you know, cross the line. Brad Ryder told us this. Anything about Howard? Hmm. Hmm. Um, okay, <laughs> I've got one. His, what's Howard's, like, hottest take? I pick out on this, this sometimes. He hates that kids in Little League shake hands. <laughs> he doesn't like handshake lines. Wow. <laughs> not, even, not even Little League. Why, I, why, why shake our hand? You play against them. Like, the nicest person in the world hates it. Hates the handshakes of Little League kids. That's George Costanza. If that got, ha if that, like, got... Abolish like if you no longer literally had to shake hands, that would be national news. People would be <laughs> protests. That would be crazy. And Howard wants that to happen. You want? He's an anarchist. I wouldn't say he wants to abolish it. He just doesn't like it. Howard hates handshakes. You heard it here first. It was a train wreck exclusive site. Train wreck sports. <laughs> Howard's got the car started. He's like, all right, come on, let's go. Get your snack. Let's hit the road. No handshakes. No handshakes. <laughs> all right, the Buffalo Bills are headed to Cincinnati. Your leaked bill schedule is on point right now. Last year was perfect. Correct? Last year it was perfect, even though I knew they didn't play the Chiefs. I just wanted to put it in there because you, everybody knew what it meant. How lucky are the Kansas City Chiefs? Always lucky, except this year they're good. Last game? They're good. Their, their, ex their execution is on point. They're good. They beat New yeah. England in New England. Yes. I, hate, I, I mean, I hate it. 
But yeah, I think they're good. They put up 42 in New England. It wasn't just But like, then again, everybody's putting up those numbers on New England now. So maybe that, you know. Isn't that kind of a sign? They could be legitimate. Now it's too early. No, it could would be, be crazy. There are a lot of people who are saying it's already true. They could be legitimately in trouble this year. This defense is looking like tissue paper. Yeah. Now that corner is still president. Yeah, oh, no. Literally, the Patriots are still point or 99.9% yeah. favorites to win the AFC East, yet a certain site that rhymes with Rovada has them at 5-1. to one. So and that would put them at about 20%. But are you betting the Bills to win it? Well, all I know is my buddy one, locked in two weeks ago oh, yeah. them at 45-1 to one to win the division. And yeah. now he's putting it in all our faces, and now they're 5-1 to one for sure. If you had 100 bucks, would you put it on? No, never mind the odds. 100, 100 bucks. To win the oh, well, no odds. I'm taking the Patriots. Patriots. For sure. Patriots. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you have $100, where are you, are you taking? I'd put it on the Patriots. Yeah, of course. Like, right? You got to think. I think like, the can prove a lot this week in Cincinnati. That's, that's it's, the, it's the next, like, six weeks. Yeah, but this one's... This is the this game. Is, this is the You're game. right, though. They, what sorry, do you sorry. say? What's October? Wins with a setback. Yes. So, years back, when you have a different... Like, a Rex Ryan, whatever, whoever. You go into this game... You're on your high horse, and we look like shit. This year, though, you ha- it's a different feeling. You know, we went to Atlanta, we got the job done. Now we're going to Cincy. We're banged up. They're pretty banged up, too. Bills are sitting at plus three right now, over and around 39. I feel different this year, though. I feel like going into Cincinnati, even though we do have these injuries, our defense is that good where I feel like McDermott's going to have them ready to go. How'd you feel last year at 4-2? Was that going into the bye? No, that was no. going into the Miami game. Going to the Miami game. They, they lost two in a row. They won four in a row to go to four and two. And I agree for the most part. I mean, there weren't wins over Denver and Atlanta. There were just wins. It was yes. San Francisco, Cleveland, the Rams, and Arizona. I think that's the four. So it was different. Um, we'll see if this team ultimately is different, though. You know, Beating Cincinnati will go a long way to convincing people that they might be. It's more important than the Tampa game. Is it more important than the Oakland game? Pro- with probably potentially not. EJ Manuel? Right. Probably not, because Oakland might be in the mix for wild cards. So I don't want to say it's more important than the Oakland game, but it's more important than last week. It's I mean, more important than Atlanta was. That team crumbled after an Aaron Williams injury in that game. I mean, can you picture this team with this coaching staff doing that? I mean, they got a defense full of cast-offs already who are clearly very well coached, disciplined, and just playing their hearts off. You look kind of rattled with all the movement going on. Yeah, there's a lot of laughter. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. The comments, the comments, the comments, comments are just going on. Our comments section they're, they're just they're afraid about our everywhere. friend Dom, who just uh, brought in a part time. Part time. Too. Part time. <laughs> so now you're now you're saying you're you're pointing back to four and two last year. My Bills drought brain is going back to three and zero, oh, 2011, going to Cincinnati. Yeah. Just beating the Patriots. Huge win. It's kind of the same situation. I think we were literally a couple point underdogs, up 17 3 at half after a huge George Wilson pick six scoop and soar. Blew it in the second half to Andy Dalton. I feel like, I don't know why, I feel like this is going to happen, but you know what? I'm in. I trust the process. No, you're addicted. I'm addicted to the process. I'm just checking the tape, making sure you got that on the camera. Hang on. <laughs> Miss Lola. Yep, perfect. He's good, he's right. good. But that's the thing, Vegas does it right. Bills plus three. They beat Denver, they beat Atlanta, and everyone's like, why the hell is Buffalo plus three? Yeah, it's not that surprising to me, right? right? But, I mean, uh, you know, the the average yeah, Joe, Joe like, like, is west. running to the to the books right now to oh, bet Bills, Bills plus three plus on the road. Three. You take down Atlanta, the team in the Super Bowl last year, take down a team that just beat, or just beat Cleveland for the first win. Yeah. Can you trust the offense, though? I trust the process. But I don't trust the offense. I don't either. I don't trust the run game. I don't trust the pass game. Not yet. I mean, the margin for error has been huge because the defense doesn't give up points. If you give up the fewest points in the league, your offense doesn't even have to be good. And that's kind of what we've seen so far. That's exactly what the defense has got it done. Yeah. You know what it's time for? Our first ever segment of white versus wrong. White or wrong? Or wrong. Jeez, not a good start. Oh, this will be like week, we'll consider this episode, like, this version, like you know, week zero of college football season. Okay, so in white or wrong, you can say versus. We're gonna delve into the sports social faux pas that one fan might commit at a game. Okay. And you're gonna tell us whether you've committed this. Okay. In fact, white, 
Or if it's wrong. <laughs> okay. Going to a game with a tucked in jersey. Oh, no, wrong. Oh. Never by accident? No. Oh, my God. We literally just had studio audience <laughs> literally <laughs> heard the cringes. <laughs> we had us. That is phenomenal. <laughs> okay. No, so, in this case, wrong. <laughs> okay. Right now, no, texting at games, it has to happen. Jury can't avoid texting. Oh, yeah. Obviously, sure, that yeah. would be inevitable. Yeah. That's white. But what about, that's white, that's white. Texting at games is white. Yep. But what about texting in the last 12 minutes of the third period or the fourth quarter of a football game? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, dude, there's too many breaks, right? Yeah, I mean, like, you're saying, like, to jinx or anything? or No, not jinxing. Like, just, like, you know, sometimes, like, they might be coming out of the field, but you're still finishing up a tweet. Or, you know, they're going out for the face-off, but you're still firing out that text to Brad Ryder, like, make sure you're up on time for tomorrow for yeah. the kids. I, uh, I tried to stop tweeting during games, and I've done that a lot for football. Uh, and hockey, too. But, no, I've definitely done that. Yeah, that's definitely me. Has you it helped the experience, what? the not texting? Not tweeting during a football game? Or tweeting? Well, no, tweeting and texting. You know, basically, because you're texting down on your phone. But if you stop tweeting during a football game, it's amazing how, like, you'll actually watch the football game. And so, you won't get sucked into why every decision was the worst one ever, and why every single, like, you'll just kind of actually appreciate the ebbs and flow of a game a little bit. So I course. try to do that a little bit. We got one white, one wrong so far. Okay. Okay. Now, this is a nice new policy that they've instituted over the last couple years. You can now bring your own food into a Bills football game okay. if it's in that clear plastic bag. Is that white or is that wrong? I've never done that. That's wrong. That's wrong? Yeah. Shouldn't be doing that. No, I don't mind terrible. if you do it. Wrong. I've never done it. Bringing food from home. I don't. But you I don't know mind what? It. What about this? You bring a nice like party pack of Lay's and you just put it in like a clear plastic bag. Pretty bomb. You or can bring a whole bunch, like a whole salt. Oh yeah, the, the guy in front of me every single week, chicken burger salad, him and his son. That dude's saving fifteen bucks a week. <laughs> I'm not joking. It's, it's smart. There's season ticket holders. It's That's smart. So funny. <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna, I'm gonna enjoy George Bush. Yeah. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> what? I'm gonna choke on a pretzel. Mm. For those keeping score at home. Okay, so that's. Wrong. Wrong. Okay. Now, you know, sometimes you do this because you've had a couple too many and you need one to finish off, or maybe it's a hot day. Sneaking a beer into a game. No. Flask. Mm, yeah, probably. <laughs> right. Why, at, yeah, at some level, somewhere, definitely. I don't remember. Yeah, I mean, I've had to have done it at some point. Yeah. The flask is a lot easier than a beer. Yeah. Sneaking beers and it's a lot more. I don't know what the word is, but bang for your buck. Bang for your buck. Right, that's a that's a half white then. That's a half white. I'm gonna say yes to the beers one too. At some point, somewhere. I don't. I don't know where. Syracuse. I'm, uh, high school. We did that for college game day. It was. I mean. Not yeah, good. I don't. I don't have. I can't. It's place not worth it, the but. four bucks, right? There's no way Syracuse football. Oh, well, yeah. Well, when, we, football. When, we, when we did our uh, our game day versus Villanova, we, I went with the water bottle. You know, that's that's the go-to. Right. Syracuse also sells beer, which, you know, helps. That is lot. phenomenal. Yeah. And you can actually super card, I think, if you're 21 over. I think you so. Can. Super right. That's phenomenal. That. Literally, so your parents just, Dad, I need, like, 500 on the dining card. And just, like, at the game, like, give me two beers before half. Phenomenal. Okay, so we got like two and a half whites, two wrongs. Let's do it. Okay, so now we got. Okay, so you're out there. You're in. You're in the jury's quarters. You know, at Yankee Stadium. Is it white of you to bring a glove to the baseball game? You're saying if I want to catch Aaron Judge's bombs? Of course. I was gonna say like maybe it depends if you're going to like someone about to hit. Well, if you're the sitting, if you're sitting something. right behind the home plate, you're not gonna bring a glove. Like, no, I would, I would silly. say you're like back there. The only spot I would do that would be at the home run derby. I would do that in the outfield at the home run derby where the the actual point is for them to smash balls into, into you. Agree. Other than that, I mean, I'll make a catch with my bare hands. It's fine. Home run derby might be one of the most underrated events in sports. True. Except what's more underrated than that is batting practice because it's home run derby and it happens every day and it's free. Start yeah. on batting practices if you can. White. White as hell to go to batting practice. I went out to a, my wife and I and a couple friends went to a Blue Jays game. You sit out there on the party deck at there at 11 a.m. and they will crush baseballs at you for a half an hour. Wow. It's wow. really impressive. I was in love with a bunch of dudes who crush baseball. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a dream of mine. All right, so uh, wow, I think whites are taking over here. I think that wrongs are going to come back. It's December. The flurries are coming down. Shirtless to a Bills game in the snow. Never done that. 
And probably would no. never, would never do that. No. no. You can be sick married for now, days. No you can be sick for days. It's just an irresponsible decision for everyone that cares about you in the world. I got a cold now, I think it's because I slept with the window open. So, yeah, I'm going to pass on that. Oh, jeez. Close that window, Jimmy. It's been, it's been chilly and cheap wrong, today, yes. wrong, wrong, wrong. Wrong. All right, we're, we're, uh, we're at half white up right now. Um, keeping score at a baseball game. I've done it for like three innings. And then, like, why am I doing this? I've done it in a basketball game. I did it at Syracuse basketball a couple times. You know, pencil it in, two, three, fouls, and then you're just like... But that's before you drink. And then you just start to drink at games. So that's wrong. Wrong. You only got so many hands. Wrong. Until it's right when you're young or... Yeah. Okay. I've done it before. Okay. But I would okay. do it again. This is where the game stops being fun and starts getting controversial. All right. The Bills just scored a huge... Go ahead, twenty-three yard field goal in the third quarter. Can you sing the shout song legitimately? Yes. White or wrong? White. White. Yes. And you've done it. Uh, sure. Yes. No, there hasn't been a big enough game where a lead in the third quarter would matter. So it's it's wrong then you're saying. I'm saying you can do it if you want. Yes, it's right. It's right to do that if the game matters enough. Maybe a, maybe like a half verse or something. <laughs> like, you know, not the whole thing though. Now here's the thing. Everyone's been to that one Bills game, that one Sabres game. You're sitting in like the 13th, 14th row. There's that one fan just a couple rows ahead, you know, whether the Sabres are down a goal. These are starting to sound like penthouse letters. Or something, you know? like going for a <laughs> the while. Bills are down 10 in the third quarter, and it's like a big third down for the other team. Get up! Get up! They need you, you know, like the whole team. Like they're like the section leader. Yeah. Is that white or is that wrong? To be that guy? To be that guy. Wrong. Wrong. In every way? Yes. Okay, good. Because, yeah, fans should just do what they want to the game. If the team's not performing, you can't really blame them for not being completely into it. Yes. He's painting the whole picture on these questions. Very you much might, so. Very you much might feel a little tired on the it's morning show. It's a Thursday. Well, you yeah. just had a chicken finger sub. Yeah, of course. And it's now. <laughs> Sorry. I, oh, how many more you got? He's got to get to bed. One more. Leaving That's early one. to beat traffic. White or wrong? White. 100%. That's Travis. it? White or wrong? Whites, whites take it. First time in history. Guys, thank you, Jeremy White. Jeremy White. Please <laughs> clap. Jeremy White's in the house. Thank you. Any final words, Maniac Topher? Al, I know you have one la- one final question for him. Oh, wow, I do. Yeah, all right. It's not white or wrong. Okay. Does this train ever stop? No. This train never stops. This train doesn't stop. I forgot my line. This oh, train. you're not supposed to tell him it's holy man! <laughs> Alright. This okay. train doesn't stop. This train does not stop. I did not tell him that. No, of course not. Before the show. Okay. We'll, we'll see you at the same This train show. does not stop. First Thank you. There it is. <laughs> Good night now. now.